Hello, my name is Kevin and welcome to the Love Decanters channel. So uh, this video is going to be a bit of a talking head one because I'm not going to show you any glass apart from what you can see behind me. Um, so someone asked me to do a video about the rules of collecting. So I've made up a list of, um, it's not really rules, but my thoughts on it because, you know, there aren't any real rules. No, you know, I've got my own rules, so I thought I'd share those with you. Um, so the first one is, is why do you collect? Okay, so I, I've always been a collecting kind of person. Um, started with stamps, I suppose. And I know my dad was a collecting person because um, he gave me his dad's, oh no, he gave me his stamp collection which included his dad's stamp collection so i still have that somewhere in the attic and uh, so yeah i've always been that kind of person i've always been interested in history and stuff and i've also been also been interested in art and design it all kind of meshes together in my head so yeah i like art and design and history and how it all goes together and yeah it just I'm just interested in lots of stuff and um, and why glass because I saw something I always had old stuff in my house you know lots of antiques and things and I saw something I, I really liked at my father-in-law's I saw some decanters and I thought yeah I'm gonna get some of those and it just set me off so that's why I collect I started collecting and just saw that yeah there, there are bargains to be had and um, that's part of the thing is like and also there's rare things that you can look for and hunt for and try and find so yeah and um, so my next one so what I've got next on my list here is uh, when you start collecting so when I started collecting yeah, I was a bit all over the place I was buying lots of different things um, just bought anything that looked like it might be cheap yeah and i think a lot of people do that um but eventually you start to think uh, how much stuff have i got I'm, i can't just buy the more you learn the more i mean i go through ebay and i see so many things that are cheap but i just can't buy it all you know i can't be just spending five ten here five ten there just more because i've got all of this and this is only part of my collection so you have to rein in and and focus on some things so um, and what did I focus on in the end so I like my Irish glass because it's got its own history um, up to do with taxation and Irish history that goes with that and I did actually live in Northern Ireland for about five years when I was a teenager so yeah it's kind of like got that the first Irish decanter I bought was a B Edwards of Belfast and I lived in Belfast for five years in the 70s so yeah that kind of like set, sets that off my head and, and it's got that differentiation where you can actually work out what some of the things exactly are so yeah that was one of the earliest things where I'm going yeah that's the thing to collect the other thing I collect is white fryers um, I never really collected the Jeffrey Baxter stuff in fact I used to back in the 90s I used to give it away as presents my sister's got a reasonable little collection of bits and pieces um, so and I started collecting a lot of the mid-century stuff that they did and the pre-war stuff and then I got into the really older stuff quite quickly and I really like their kind of like late 19th century early 20th century stuff and that's what most of my white fries is now yeah and I'm still out there looking for that but not as avidly as the Irish glass and the other one that I look for is Stromberg's Heighton. Um, there was someone that was bringing Stromberg's Heighton, importing it into the UK in the 1930s. It's something that just, I just like the look of it. I feel like it's um, modern glass being brought to the UK and it, the guy that was doing it was very influential. He was actually involved in white fryers and all sorts of bits and pieces. Um, so, yeah, I, I see him cropping up in various period um, adverts and stuff like that. So, yeah, he was a man that was out and about 
doing his business and getting involved in the glass industry in the 1930s. So he's quite, I think he's a very influential person, someone that's underrated. Um, his name was Hugh Duncook. I'm very interested in his, his glass, but there isn't masses of it. So it's got that rarity factor. So you're not going to find it all the time. And I am willing to punt out a little bit for it as well. So everything else that I buy has to be a real bargain. Yeah, um, there's kind of like stratific stratifications in what I'm willing to spend on what. And, um, and also I have that in my head. So this is the other thing is, is how much to spend. Okay, in my head, I have a rough idea of what I'm willing to spend every month. I don't like to go over that. So if I punt out on something expensive, I then stop buying any cheap stuff. And I always look at that thing where if I see something that's very expensive, I'm thinking, oh, but I could buy 10 cheap things for that, you know. Am I in a rush to get that? So I try to create that balance, but the thing you've got to remember is, what is it I'm willing to spend overall per month? Yeah, that's got to be in your head. And also, um, when your collection does get over a certain size, you then have to, I, I've not sold anything for a little while, but I need do need to sell some things because space becomes an issue. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be having a bit of a clear out probably over the next few weeks this summer anyway. Um, don't know how much I'll sell, but I'll eBay it and I've got a couple of places where I can sell it through. But uh, yeah, I do have to. And that's something any collector is going to have to do at some point. If it's something that you're going to do long term, you're going to have to think about getting rid of it at some point because you can't just keep packing your house with stuff. Otherwise, you, you're a borderline hoarder. I'm borderline hoarder, but I am willing. I'm, I am willing to get rid of stuff, and I do regularly get rid of stuff. But it's, it just makes the stuff that I got left harder to decide what I'm going to do with because obviously, that is the stuff that I didn't cull, and obviously I like it better than the stuff that I did cull. And as you cull more and more, you start getting down to the essence of things that I really like and uh, oh god it's really hard to get rid of them because that's your collecting instinct within you. So what else have I written on here? Um, I yeah I think I'm about done. So my rules are not hard and fast. I, I know that I've got a spending limit. Um, when I was working I used to occasionally get bonuses and I would splash out a bit but uh, when I say bonuses, are not like 10 grand or anything, it was just like a couple. <laughs> um, so not that kind of bonus, yes, but something. And you just go, ooh, got this bit extra money I could spend, you know, a couple hundred maybe. But anyway, um, yeah, that's, that's my philosophy. Just enjoy it, learn and enjoy. That's the thing and buy what you like and try not to overspend yeah that's the buy what you like try not to overspend and things are only worth what you're willing to pay for them they're only worth that to you okay not to you know you can go on etsy and buy what you want almost sometimes because they've got stuff but the prices are just phew. but um and it's a bit like i'm going to go to the glass fair and I might buy a few bits, but I'm, but they're going to have to be the things that I really want because obviously it's not like me going on eBay and going, oh, look at this, is this nice thing that I'm going to get for a tenner? Um, I'm going to be spending more. So it has to fit into those categories of this is something I really want. And you have to kind of keep that balance. And I'm not, I haven't bought anything for a little while, so I'm looking forward to going to the glass fair on the 12th of May. Look out for that. Um, so... Yeah, I think I'm done. So what else do I have to say? I don't think I have much else to say. Just please remember to um, like and subscribe. Um, it helps my channel. Um, I will be doing more videos, of course. And thank you for watching and have a good night.